Welcome to Higher Ed, Teaching with a Christian Perspective. I'm your host, Chris Cassidy. On this episode, I'm talking with Mrs. Kristen Campbell, our fifth and sixth grade teacher here at Hawthorne Christian Academy. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Campbell. Hey. So I would like to begin. You're one of our newer teachers. Tell me how long have you been here at Hawthorne? All together now, like right at two and a half years. And as we were talking off microphone before we started, you came at a great time, right in the middle of COVID. So Yeah, that was very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> very interesting. Yes, the protocols were strict, and so we had to miss a lot of school that first year, I'm sure, at least, mm-hmm. with, that you were here. But uh, things are back to normal now, thank goodness. And so, first of all, just tell me, what is your motivation in the classroom? My motivation, the first thing that popped in my head when I read this question, when I'm thinking about this question, was connection and education. So bringing those things together. Of course, connection with the kids as far as relationship and trying to build relationship and rapport with them, making connections with their world and what I'm trying to teach them. So the the word connection really came to my mind a lot, I guess bringing those things together as far as I feel like when there's a really good connection relationship, then I'm able to speak into their lives. At this point, teaching, I've learned that teaching's more than just book, you know, like reading the book and yes, <laughs> there's a lot more that goes into it. It's much more than just teaching the curriculum. You have to build, as you said, that relationship. You have to have that connection yeah. or else they're not going to learn. You got your bachelor's from USC, and you uh, are working on your master's in counseling, which I think is a great fit for education because a lot of teaching today is counseling their mental and spiritual side before you can ever do anything academically. And a lot of young people are struggling with a lot of issues between society and maybe even at home sometimes. So you know, that counseling component probably is a great fit for education. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it comes out a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my first 10 years of experience working was counseling, so that comes out a lot of times whether yes. <laughs> I want it to or not. And, and your age, you have fifth and sixth grade, that's a tough age anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the things we used to see in high school now have filtered all the way down to sixth graders right. and fifth graders. A lot of the issues and peer pressure and things. So Mm -hmm. that's good to have that knowledge. One of the things I've noticed, Ms. Campbell, when you're at recess is you interact with your students so well, you know, going back to that connection you mentioned and how you, you'll go out there and play with them and you will, you know, talk to them. Tell me a little bit about how does that enthusiasm and interaction help with the learning process? I'm hoping by Part, you know, by doing that, it's partly just having fun, showing them, you know, I can That's have right. fun. And, and the other part is trying to build that relationship and um, play with them. Some of it is like maybe managing some mm, things, like right. making sure everybody's being nice. Or, yes. Yes, you know, so there's kind of a few things going on. So you have three children of your own. How does that help you relate to your students? Well, first of all, I'm very thankful. For the three that I have, they're absolute gifts. God knows exactly what we need, right? That's exactly so right. He sent me <laughs> three amazing children. Yes. Um, and I am part of that, me going out there and playing and stuff like that is, you know, my kids are still school age. So yes. I'm really connected with those ages. Yes. So it's not hard for me to go from, you know, the kids that we have too yes. and their reactions and how they relate to things. So. Um, it's, it's a huge help, I think. I mean, it so it helps. I think it does help tremendously to have children that age because that helps mm-hmm. you understand your students better. And mine share with me still. Yes. <laughs> they're still at the age where they like to share with me. So that's good. I kind of have like an inside. <laughs> yes. To What's going like, on? And some there's moments where I'm like, what is, what are they talking about when they say that? And they'll tell me. And, you know, if it's a negative thing, we need to nip that in the bud. So that's I right. Do, I do appreciate that. They still share with me. I hope it's always like that. (laughs) 
So, Miss Campbell, even though you've been, you know, in education and you've you've helped with counseling for uh, many years, you're a relatively new teacher. What are some things that you've learned in these last two and a half years that you might want to share with another teacher to help them become a better teacher? So I am very new at this, <laughs> and to be honest, and that's okay. I think that's great. You need a, <laughs> you need a dynamic. You need that mix in any school. You know, Miss Hickson's been here nineteen years, so I mean, right. but you need also teachers that have been here a couple years. That's that's a good mix. It I, I think it's great. So yeah. don't ever be ashamed of that. What so what do you think are some ideas though that are things you've learned? Um, well, I'm I am new at this. I'm. I guess I'm still in that place where I'm figuring out, okay, am I doing this right? But then we have tests or we have really great conversations and I'm like, okay, maybe they did get it. So sometimes there are moments where I'm like, I don't know, am I doing this right? (laughs) And I think that's every teacher. And I think that's even, even my, I mean, I've been in, I haven't been teaching for 28 years, but I've been in education 20 years. I've been teaching here for 12 years. Mm-hmm. I still have those moments. Did they get that? Okay. You know, so that's, that's so completely normal. That that's completely normal. Um, but, you know, sticking to the curriculum, of course. Um, and I, like you mentioned, Ms. Hickson, and I'm so thankful. Ms. Yes. Ms. Hickson, Ms. Cassidy, I'm constantly asking them questions. <laughs> I feel so bad for them. No, and, they're, they don't mind helping. I know they don't. I so. know. They're so sweet. And pretty much anybody else, you... Um, Miss Brian, Miss Gilmore, yes. like I've been able to really ask questions and get really good feedback, which I really appreciate. People have shown us over the years too. So that's mm-hmm. part of the learning cycle is those with some experience show us. And then we learn actually from you as mm-hmm. well. You know, we see you have new innovative ways of teaching and we pick up on those. So it's, it's a great learning environment. But going back to the question. So something I've definitely learned you know, there's a real difference in retaining, like understanding and retaining things versus just the student memorizing for a test. Yes. So I found out pretty quick that I would much rather them just really understand and retain what I'm getting so we can continue to talk about it. Yes. Instead of just memorize it real quick and then test on it. And then if I mention it again in a week or two, they've forgotten it. Yeah. (laughs) Oh no, that was really important. Yeah. So, you know, Definitely, that's been the biggest thing for me is now, you know, being able to focus objectives and lessons on making sure they're really understanding and grasping what the lessons are about, what they're doing, why they're doing it, you know, the purpose behind it. I feel like that helps a lot if they if they know the purpose <laughs> as to why right. they're that's doing right. what they're doing, and then that kind of makes it easier for them to to really grasp onto. So I get this sometimes, and I've asked several of our teachers as I've interviewed them, if you had one tip for a parent in helping their child learn, what would that be? You know, allowing them or letting them know that I am available for guidance and help if needed and support in any way possible, but also they need to be, they need to own their education. Mm-hmm. Their, it's, it's their education, not mine. That's <laughs> I've already right. Got mine. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. So, you know, they need to be responsible, take responsibility. If you know you have homework assignments, it's your responsibility to get them done. You know, making sure that, of course, they have a good environment to do their homework or their projects or study, a peaceful environment. That's really important. I think at home, like, it's really hard to study and get stuff done if there's always distractions or. I agree. Really, 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 really busy and you can't get stuff done. So, um, providing all that stuff and then allowing them, like, they need to take control of their education and get their work done. At Hawthorne, we place a great emphasis on the spiritual matters of the child's life. What are some of the things you do in the classroom to show them who Jesus is and to show them? how to be a Christian. Mm. So I do love our Bible class. Like we open the morning with Bible and prayer. I think that's just probably the best way to start the day. It really is. Good, good tone for the day. Yes. Um, and with that, with the curriculum we use, we, it's really easy to dive in nice. pretty deep actually. Great. Um, and I 
I really enjoy reading the scripture and the questions. It gets them really thinking and talking. Um, so that kind of sets the tone for the day. And then there's always opportunities, I feel like, throughout the day, you know, to show Jesus' love, basically. I'm constantly praying about being a vessel, Yes. you know, for God here, whatever whoever needs to hear, yes. like he knows, right? So I could just be that vessel for him if he just wants to <laughs> use me in any way possible. Well, Ms. Campbell, I want to thank you again for your time. And thank you for telling our listeners a little bit about what you do here at Hawthorne and the different ways you minister to these children. So I just want to thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And thank you for listening to Higher Ed.